What is going on, Governor's Just School here, and today we're going to talk about the best epic infantry pairs in Rise of Kingdoms. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. This is a guide oriented towards very low spenders to free-to-play players to help you figure out what epic infantry pairs work out the best. If you like Rise of Kingdoms videos where we talk about how you get value as a free-to-play player, you should like and subscribe. We've got content oriented just for you, and we are a sponsored creator in Rise of Kingdoms. My friends, let's talk about some of the very best epic infantry pairs that you can assemble in Rise of Kingdoms. You have only a couple choices for your primary infantry commander, and that includes, of course... Sun Tzu, and also Ulji Mundok. Now, you could use other commanders as a primary for having full infantry, but I'm going to make the argument that if you are truly bringing full infantry, you're going to want one of these commanders as the primary in order to get the benefit of the infantry tree. So with all of that said, let's talk about some of the very best pairs that we think exist for infantry commanders. Now, the first most obvious slam dunk pick is going to be to put Ulji Mundok with Sun Tzu using Sun Tzu as the primary in order to take advantage of the skill tree. These two commanders, when paired together in the open field or in Sunset Canyon, will be very tanky, very retaliatory towards enemies that are hitting them uh, because they not only have elevated skill damage, but also Ulji Mundok makes it on his fourth skill, so there's a chance you're going to increase your own damage by 100%. On the next turn, that can get pretty insane if what happens on the next turn is Sun Tzu's AoE damage. This is one of my favorite infantry pairings by far, but what if you wanted to split up these two commanders? Are there other commanders that you can work with? And the answer is, of course, slam dunk yes. If you're looking at an Ulji Mundok primary, you have several choices that will work really well for you in the early game of Rise of Kingdoms or in Sunset Canyon. First and foremost, I want to mention a pair that I think is exceptional, of course, Boudicca as the secondary Ulji Mundok primary. Boudicca offers a ton of utility, healing, attack reduction, uh, rage gen, uh, and rage gen uh, removal from the enemy. This is a pretty phenomenal pairing as a secondary to Ulji Mundok. In addition, I think that you could use Osman to get a bunch of damage out onto the field. I think he could be better in some other places though, but if you put Osman with Ulji, you're going to do pretty darn well in part because you're going to be able to bring more troops to the battlefield. Um, and in addition, if you do get some skill attacks when this 100% damage bonus is active, whew, Ulji is going to do some pretty serious work with Osman. With that said, you could instead go for a much more tanky route, and I think this is very intriguing. I like a lot the combination of Ulji Mundok and Sepio for a very tanky march. Why is that? The active skill of Sepio is going to reduce the damage you take and elevate your counter attack damage. He's also going to make it so that there's a chance to have your attack elevated when you are being hit and you hit back really hard. There's also some healing in here when you drop below 40%, which is really very, very good for Canyon. Ulji primary, Sepio secondary lets you bring more troops to the battlefield, and that makes a very tanky frontline march that I think is very effective. On the topic of very effective marches, let's talk a little bit about what you would do if you had a Sun Tzu primary. Now, Sun Tzu, as you know, is my favorite epic, the best epic in Rise of Kingdoms. He's useful in a lot of different places, so chances are you may already have him deployed somewhere else. But if you had him free, my number one pick as a secondary commander, other than Olji Munda, who let's assume you're splitting out to somewhere else, would be Boudicca. Now, this, of course, is no coincidence that in the early game of Rise of Kingdoms, we recommend that you start investing in Sun Tzu and Boudicca as your first couple of commanders, then Joan of Arc, in part because you can put Sun Tzu and Boudicca together and they'll do really well. For all the same reasons that Boudicca was good with Lil Mundok, she is also exceptional with Sun Tzu. In addition, 
I think that Osman is a better secondary to Sun Tzu than with Ulji Mundok. Why is that? Um, that is because the 20% damage boost on the fourth skill of Sun Tzu is going to elevate the active skill damage of Osman, and that is exactly what Osman wants. Sun Tzu has a rage engine that is going to make Osman crank out his skills. Uh, the Osman Sun Tzu pair is phenomenal in Canyon. I would recommend that very highly, especially if you're in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, there is one more commander we haven't really talked about yet, and, and I guess before I get there, one, one last thing. Although I think CPO was really good with Olji Mundok, I think CPO is a bit less exciting with Sun Tzu. Um, that's because Sun Tzu is elevating skill damage, but CPO doesn't do any skill damage. They're a fine pair because the rage from Sun Tzu is going to make it so you have higher uptime on this active skill, but I think that the Olji Mundok CPO pairing is a bit more natural. No, the commander that we need to talk about for just a moment is Joan of Arc. You could use a Joan of Arc primary with either a Ulji Mundok secondary or a Sun Tzu secondary and do really, really well. That is largely because of the support tree offering a huge amount of restoration uh, of rage up in the top from Rejuvenate. If you went this route, I think it would be pretty effective. Um, and I would make the argument probably your Joan of Arc with Sun Tzu is the absolute best pair for cranking out Joan of Arc's buff as much as possible. Um, you also could use as a secondary Ulji Mundok. That would work very well. Cranking out Ulji Mundok's debuff, the 30% defense reduction is no joke, and the damage factor here to pair with that is pretty reasonable. In both cases, you want to bring full infantry. I think that sort of a pairing... We'll do you in the early game, but the other infantry pairs are probably a good bit better. Um, eventually, you'll probably land on like a Joan of Arc Boudicca pairing and then some other pairing with your infantry like we were showing earlier. Now, just for a moment, we should touch on some of the builds that you would use uh, if you're using these infantry pairings for either open field or canyon. If you're rocking Sunset Canyon, this build we have here, I would recommend highly. We do not go for all of these march speed talents like we normally might in the open field to instead focus on maximum rage gen and also the maximum effective talents from the infantry tree, given that we're not trying to go anywhere fast in canyon. If you wanted to defend a flag, this build over here would be my recommendation. You could use Olji Mundok and Sun Tzu for flag defense. They are a garrison pair. I would recommend that you only do that in the early game in Rise of Kingdoms because eventually there should be somebody in your alliance or kingdom who's got legendaries to do this job. If you are defending your city, here is the garrison build that I would highly recommend. And if what you are doing is using uh, Sun Tzu in the open field and you want to have a lot of march speed, the modification I would make to this build over here is I would shave off Feral Nature and Clarity and all of these uh, stat points leading up to it in order to pick up Elite Soldiers and also the march speed from Fleet of Foot. That'll serve you really, really well. If we flip over to Olji Mundok, he is an interesting commander because he's got the attack tree instead of the skill tree. Um, this is the build that we're using for open field combat. Of course, we're not really using Olji much for open field combat. We don't have his level maxed yet. Uh, but if I were using him in Canyon, I was toying around with a build kind of like this. You might use like a CPO as the secondary for this configuration. You'd have a very tanky build uh, that is wasting no points into March Speed. I will say, though, we kind of run out of meaningful places to put talent points with this particular build, so I'm inclined to believe you'll end up with something a little closer to this, maybe shaving off your fleet of foot talent points in order to drop them in to Unyielding, Armor Joints, and maybe even make your way down to Martial Mastery, where you're decreasing your active skill damage but increasing your normal attack damage. Again, a decent consideration or or talent choice if you're pairing with a commander like CPO for a tanky march. I do think that these points up top, want to pop, would be also good to grab. So my friends, what do you think of this epic 
infantry commander guide. Is there a pairing I missed or that you would have expected? We did not include a commander like Lohar because, like, he's for barbarians. We didn't include a Boudicca primary, even though she could fulfill that role, because I feel like, yeah, you get some good march speed from the peacekeeping tree, but I feel like the talent trees are better on our Sun Tzu and Ulji Mundak options. If you did enjoy this video, please do like and subscribe. That's your way of giving me a virtual high five. Leave a comment again with the pairings you're using, Epic Commanders for Infantry. And until next time, you have fun smashing the king tub. Oh, and uh, P.S. Sometime soon we'll cover one legendary and one epic infantry commander and what that pairing would optimally look like.